Hi guys, this is Mike from Mike's Home ESL. You're having problem with your classroom management. Some kids are really terrible in the classroom. You don't really know what to do. So here are four tips to help you manage your class. Right now on Mike's Home ESL. If you are new in here, you gotta know that Mike's Home ESL is a teaching tips channel, so I consider you to subscribe. So four basic tips on how to manage your class. First, we will go with teacher's behavior, so what is going to be your behavior. Two, rules or order setup. Three, classroom control. Four, Communicate. One, the teacher's behavior. And it's your behavior. So you gotta be smiling. You gotta be nice and strict when needed. You gotta be active, be patient, and be an observer. So be smiling, of course, it's quite obvious because the kids in this way will feel very interesting in you and will feel that you are someone very nice and they will be willing to pay attention in your class so you got to be nice and strict when needed of course when you are smiling and nice with kids they're gonna start to get crazy so you gotta control and sometimes you have to be a little bit strict be active of course, you need to be active in your class. Like this, you will keep the kids' attention on you. Be patient. You know, it's never easy to start a class, especially if it's the first day. And even during one month, it's gonna be a little bit hard till the kids start to be accommodate to your teaching. So be patient and the work will pay. Be an observer. It's very important to be an observer in your class to target the kids who are naughty, the kids who are shy, outgoing, or even advanced. But we will see this in another video in more details. I forgot to mention a very important point, and that's the angry face. Don't forget to do the angry face, especially when the kids are being very naughty, not listening to you. So do the angry face. They will understand right away. Two, rules and orders. Obviously, you get formal school rules like being on time, respect your teacher, respect your classmates, etc. But you better add some orders like, for example, stand up, sit down. When, the, when you say stand up, the kids can say one, two. When you say sit down, they can also say one, two or something else. It's up to you. You have to teach them as well. Raise your hand. You got to teach them as well. Put your hands on my desk. For example, you say put your hands and the kids answer on my desk. And at this time, they will put their hands on the desk. And when you say line up, the kids can say one, two, three, classroom control. One very effective way to control your class is your rewarding method. So here is a, an example of two teams rewarding method. It can be boys and girls, team one, team two, or whatever other names you want to give. So you can draw stairs on both sides of your board and on the top of it you can draw a prize then if the kids of this team is doing good they can go a step up uh, they can go one step up for example here the girls are doing pretty good so they can go up and the boys are not doing that good so during your class if the kids are doing good they can go up and if they're not doing good, they go downstairs. Quite easy. 
I've even seen some teachers using stairs, and when they go up, 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 they will fall into the toilets. But we can now avoid that, and we'll see what I use me in my class. So you can use this square with five points. This square, this square is a total of five points. You get four sides, and the one in the middle is going to be five points. You can, of course, use emoji, a smiley face, or a sad face. It depends on how the kids are doing. In my class, I use that square because it's very convenient. You give the kids right away five points, and after, if you want, you can erase some of the sides of the square when the kids are not doing good. And you can, of course, at the end of the class, you can reward the team who is doing very well by giving them some fancy pencils, fancy erasers. Kids love it and it doesn't cost that much. So go for it because it's going to help you a lot in your class to control the kids, especially if you have some very naughty kids. Uh, it's a very good way to control. I will do as well another video in part two. I will go more in details to teach in this way. Four, communicate. The goal is to solve the problem, right? You get a problem in the class, for example, an exa a kind of example of a problem, a naughty boy, a naughty boy in the classroom, he is disturbing the class, he is shouting for nothing. Well, so you go and first talk to him, then second, talk to the to the assistant if she can do or if he can do something about it if not if the kids still going on so you go and talk to the parents this is an example when you have a problem with a naughty boys but it can be all any it can be any other kind of stuff so try to communicate as much as you can so don't be scared to communicate with parents. It will show that you are a responsible, serious, and professional teacher. Hope you liked the video, so don't forget to leave some comments and give some likes. And if you're new in here, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in another video. That was Mike from Mike's Home ESL. Goodbye. This is Mike from Mike's Home ESL. Today, another video about how to manage your class and how to control your kids. Here we go. That's right now. Um, uh, what's going on? Well, the kids are too noisy, huh? Hmm. All right, here we go into the... Here we go into the video right now. We need to control! If you are new in here, you gotta know that Mike's Home ESL is an ESL teaching tips channel. ESL means English as a second language. So if you are new in here, don't forget to subscribe. Classroom Management Part 2 Controlling and Rewarding Rewarding is not only here to make the kids happy, but also is a good tool to control your class. So today we're going to see those two different points, my rewarding method, what I use in my class, what method is working fine for me, because you can have different kind of methods, you can choose the one that you feel is good for you, but for myself we will see what kind of method I use in my class. Second how to react to kids' behaviors. So kids have different kind of behaviors. They're very difficult to control sometimes. So how to react to it, how to solve the problem? Here we go, right now, on Mike's Home ESL. Do you remember in part one about classroom management? I've mentioned how the teacher have to behave in the classroom. And a very important point was be an observer. Controlling a class of students starts the very first day you have class with new students. Like this, they will know the limits that they shouldn't cross. But they will try to cross these limits because, you know, they're kids. 
So remember one thing, you are not only a teacher, you are also an educator. So you gotta educate kids just like the parents do. Teach them good learning habits and social habits like leadership skills, team player skills, being respectful, being polite, be responsible and be truthful. But now we're gonna see how to control your class by rewarding. One, my rewarding method. For my rewarding methods, I will use two different kind of methods according to the number of kids I have in the class. So for small classes, I will write each kid's name on the board. It's very good for me to check out who, which kids is doing good and the ones who are not doing good. It's also good for the parents when they come and fetch the kids, they will check out the board and say, hey, why, why is my kid not doing good in the class? And then you can communicate with the parents. So you can do this at the very beginning of the semester. It will be very useful to control your kids, especially in your, if you only write their names and uh, give them points according to their behavior during the class. And as well, you can erase using that square kind of rewarding. So it's a total of five points. And if they're not good, you can erase a side of the square, so which is very convenient. But you can use other kind of rewarding. If you want to reward by five points, they will like it. You got to remember that the kids like to have a lot of points. So it's better to give them this kind of rewarding, like five points, than uh, drawing five stars is going to take all the, your, your board. For a great number of students, I will use mm, teams and a minimum of 14 will be great, but it can go up to eight teams. It all depends how many students you get in a class and I will reward them using the square as well. So I use these two methods because they are easy to set up. It doesn't take too long to get ready and they are very efficient. So be careful when you choose a method. Uh, this method mustn't be an inconvenient. It mustn't be taking too much time in your class. So set up a rewarding method which is efficient and easy to set up. Two, how to react to kids' behaviors. Please. Oh. Mm, thank you. Please be quiet. Naughty students doesn't mean that they are bad students. It's just they cannot control themselves. So sometimes during the class they will be disturbing others. They will be shouting for nothing. They will be playing in a class and they will be sometimes unpolite. So how to react on this kind of behavior? So you gotta do that sad face. Show them that you're not happy what they're doing. Erase some points on the board. One thing that can work very well is to change their sit. Let them sit with a girl. When you have a very naughty class, don't let the boys all together or don't let the girls all together. So you gotta change their sit. Can be a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, etc. So changing the sit will be a very effective way and the kids will behave better. Uh-huh. Okay, so you don't want to be quiet, easy. So you don't want to be quiet? Okay, please stand up. And when they behave better, you just have to praise them. Good job. 
So don't forget to reward them. Like this, they will keep a good behavior in class. So don't forget to praise, it's very important. When there's something wrong, you gotta tell them. But when there's something good, you gotta tell them too and reward them. If you shout on the keys all the time and you never reward him when he is doing good, he will feel very lonely and he will keep on just doing what he's the best at and it's being naughty. So you don't want that in your class, so just reward them, praise them and they will keep this good behavior. And if you really can't change the behavior of this kid, just go to the parents, it will help you a lot. Then we have the shy student. A shy student doesn't mean he's a bad student too. This is the same. They are no stupid kids. They are just kids who are used to certain kind of teaching method. So you always have to think about what teaching method fits everyone. And it's not an easy job. So, the shy kid. The shy kid Hello, is always a boy, a lovely boy, a lovely girl, very lovely, but you look at them and you feel that they're very lonely in the corner of the class. You can understand why a shy kid is shy. It's pretty much because they are not self-confident. And a shy kid can be a very advanced one. You gotta help him take out his qualities. So it's your job to help them by asking them to participate in a class, even if they don't want. I say, come on, just participate on the class, just participate to the class, or I will erase your point, right? And she will feel like, oh, and all the kids will be, come on, come on, come on. So he will be helped by all the class. But if it's a kid who is really, really shy, you can just go with your TA, talk to him and say that you are here to help him or her. What I say most of the time in Chinese, I will say, oh, that's a pity. You are so cute, so lovely, but you don't want to talk. Oh, that's a pity. If you could talk, if you could raise your hand, that would be perfect. So if you praise them, the kid will feel more self-confident. So even if this, um, some of the kids you never hear a sound during the class some of the kids they do not open their mouth during the class but once they say even if it's only a word just go and praise him give some points and he will feel more self-confident and he'll be willing to do it again so for the shy students don't forget to put them in front of the class and remember don't be shy just try. The outgoing kid. This kid is the opposite of the shy one. You will see in the class, he will be talking all the time, he will be doing actions, he will be crazy, and sometimes it's really boring. It's very difficult for him to stand properly, and we always say, hey boy, you got hands in your pants. Huh? Yeah, so that this kind of boy. They can be very active in class. They will be raising their hand all the time, even if they don't know what they're saying but you gotta control them and say hey boy you cannot answer without raising your hand okay so these kids are very very outgoing they are not shy and they will be playing uh, they will be never doing the same thing during the class so you have to control them as well just go and try to really raise some of the star if they are really becoming naughty and try to praise him as well very well when he is doing good when he's doing good just praise him right away he'll be very happy and try to control if he is not doing good just go erase some star he likes to get everybody's attention even the teacher so you gotta be careful there are sometimes a kind of advanced student that means that they can help you in the class when nobody wants to talk he will be talking for sure so he can be helpful but he can be as well someone really disturbing in the class so control him right away by erasing some points 
and praising him when he's doing good and if it's not working just go again to the TA uh, talk to him on face to face and if it's not working just go to the parents and very nicely explain to the parents that he is really good but sometimes yeah you know what I mean the advanced kid. So who wants to hear answer? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Sunny. My favorite food is smelly tofu. Smelly tofu. Oh my God! What is that? Yes. Good job. Give me a try. Good. Okay. The advanced kid is someone who knows a lot. He is always raising his hand. Any questions you're gonna ask, he's gonna raise his hand. He's gonna ask questions to you all the time because he wants to know more. He's gonna ask questions even if he can't ask those questions in his, in English, he's gonna ask them in his mother language. So these kids can be very useful in your class because when nobody is talking, you go to the advanced kid, he is going to raise his hand and he's a kind of leader in the class so everybody is gonna look at him or her and say oh wow that's nice yeah I want to say something too yeah I got an idea and all other kids are gonna follow so he is a leader in your class and if you have an advanced kids in your class that's just awesome but be careful because advanced kids can be the ones also who likes to show up so sometimes they want to say stuff that has nothing to deal with the class but you don't have to say no that's wrong you just praise him in a way that he understand that it's good that what he said because you gotta encourage him it's very good he has a very good behavior in the class very fluent so if he is fluent in the class just let him say what he has to say and then let him understand he has to come back to the topic of the class they can be also troublesome in a way of they're gonna disturb others because they always want to let me try let me try and many advanced kids will be if you don't choose them they will be like oh no <laughs> well, I don't care you know, they have a very uh, hot character they are not all like this but most of them most of advanced kids if you don't ask them to answer they will feel like so they will feel so sad but they have to understand that they are in a classroom that they are other friends other students that are learning too tell him to help others sometimes you can have those kind of kids um, sometimes the advanced kid can be very useful to help others who are more shy and it will make your class looking like a team a family and that's the most important thing because when you're teaching you need to have kids helping each other instead of showing up and saying yeah you know what i'm the best i know i'm the best and you just nothing no you gotta let them know that you will be praised for helping others if you are just someone who always like to show up nobody is gonna be your best friend you know so you remember what I said last time you gotta teach them social habits so that's for this reason that sometimes you gotta let this you gotta your your target is to get everybody helping each other respecting each other so the advanced kid is someone very helpful in a class so that was basic tips um, about controlling by rewarding i hope you like this video then you have to make you have to understand that if there's something wrong in your class it's not always because of the kids it's sometimes because of the way you teach and sometimes of the way you react on different kids behavior if you want your class to work like a team like a family you gotta know each kid's character and know how to react according to their behavior so i hope you like the video don't forget to subscribe if you are new in here and i'll see you in another video bye
Hi guys, this is Mike from Mike's Home ESL and today we're gonna see three basic tips for your demo class. So what is a demo class? A demo class is a demonstration class. If you are a foreign teacher in another country, if you are working in a private school or what we call also English training schools, so you will have to face those demonstration class. Here are three basic tips for your demonstration class. Check this out. In a demonstration class, in what we call a demo class, you will have the parents watching and also new kids. And at the end of this demo class, all the parents will decide if they sign or not. So you gotta do a good job. First, the preparation. You gotta prepare your content. You gotta prepare the structure and of course, what methods you're gonna, you're gonna use. Um, of course, the content. What are you going to teach? How old are the kids? Make sure to have all these informations that you need. How old are the kids? Uh, what should you teach or what should you not teach? Of course, always go for something simple for the kids to make the kids speak. If you go with too much complicated, the kids will feel boring and they will not participate into the class. So most part of the time you are working with a TA, a teacher assistant. He'll be here to help you in this demo class. So you will have to cooperate with him and try this demo class without any keys. Yeah, preparation, very important. The structure, what you're gonna start with. Of course, always a warm up. Then what game you're gonna play. Then what you're gonna, what sentences you're gonna use. Of course, you cannot use only words. The method, what method you're gonna use. Pretty much ESL teachers always use that TPR, total physical response. TPR, a very important method for your class, of course. Number two, behavior, especially your behavior. Of course, you gotta be active. Your demo class must have a good tempo, not too fast, not too slow. You gotta be smiley if the key Kids love people who are smiling. If you are like, oh, no, it's not gonna work. Everybody knows that. And of course, attention. Pay attention on everything. What I mean on everything, pay attention on that boy over there in the corner who doesn't lie to speak. Because if he speaks during your demo class, especially at the end, he, he's gonna be at the beginning of the class, a kid who doesn't like to speak will be like watching others and he will see others having fun and he will start to be engaged into the demo. He will, uh, he, he's going to feel like, yeah, I gotta practice, I look like an ass. <laughs> I, I, I look stupid not doing anything. So he's gonna, he's gonna practice and he's gonna, uh, start to speak so like I said this guy in the corner he is the most important kid probably in your class but you don't have to show it in front of everybody because you got the parents here he is probably one of the kids that you will have to work more if he sign into your school when I say pay attention you get also pay attention to the kids security make sure that what you're playing is safe and all that stuff. Pay attention as well on the parents who will be probably very close to their kids, in the back of their kids, and will be all the time, come on, say it, come on, come on, say the word. No, you ask the parents to be pleased, or you can ask your TA to do it for you, then the parents do not communicate with the kids. Even if the kids doesn't, doesn't want to speak, parents stay aside and only watch. And of course, uh, make sure the parents are not playing with their mobile phone too, all right? Little bit of respect for the teacher, please. Three, 
make the kids happy to learn and this is the most important thing at the end of the class they will pretty much run to you hug you the result of a good work if the kids are running to you they love you you play a good game but be careful to what to what kind of game you're gonna play don't play hide and seek without the kids practicing english right remember i've seen so many teachers playing this game and yeah that's failure and so yes please make the kids happy to learn um, reward the kids during class uh, for those who are very shy just encourage them give them high five give them more points on the board so that is a very important thing make them happy to learn and you will have the parents signing for your class. So that was three very basic tips for your demo class. I hope it can help you. I will see you in another video, probably other videos like how to structure your work. It's one of the most important thing. If you are new in here, you gotta know that Mike's Home is an ESL teaching tips channel. If you're new in here, I consider you to subscribe. But for now, I'll just say goodbye. See you guys. Take care.